Guys, in this video, I'm not only going to take you through what happens when you have a low battery warning on the G-Shock GWG1000, I'm also going to take you through a little story which basically happened to me when I tried to recharge this watch in direct sunlight. People asked me about G-Shocks in direct sunlight and something very interesting happened to me when I did that over the last few days. And it wasn't pretty. However, keep watching and you will see what happened. Morning guys, what do you notice about my G-Shock Mudmaster GWG1000? That's right, it has the low battery indicator flashing. Now, not only is the indicator flashing, but we've got some lack of function. We have no backlight coming on. We have no compass working. We have no... Actually, the watch has essentially lost about 80% of its functionality. Um, the simple reason for this there's nothing wrong with the watch. The watch has simply been in a dark environment in a box which I'd put my G-Shocks for long enough that it no longer has the enough charge in it. You'll see that the stopwatch does still work and some element of it, elements of it are fine. However, we need to recharge it. So what I'm gonna do very simply is put it out in the sun and see how long it gets to get takes to get to medium and full. Now, for those who don't know, pressing this bottom left button, or the C button, means that it comes back and shows the L, M or H, depending if it's low, medium or high battery. So let's see how long it takes. I'll keep you posted. So here we go, it's 10 to eight in the morning. It's gonna go in direct sunlight when I pull the uh, the iPad away from it. It will be in direct sunlight and I'll keep checking every hour or so to see when we hit medium and then high via the tough solar. So at this point I leave the G-Shock to bask in the sun by itself soaking up those beautiful rays and hope that it will spring back into action very soon. So keep on watching if you want to see what happens. Okay, so here's an update. The GWG1000 has been out in the sun for just under two hours. And let's have a look. This is a slightly different look of the face. And the reason for that is because, here we go, M. Did you see the M at the bottom left in the digital display there? Let's go through again. Hold the bottom left button, M. That means it's at medium. That means if I press the top right here, you'll now see the compass is operating correctly. And the light, the flashlight, is operating too. So the, the watch has actually um, already went from very low to where the functionality was um, impacted to being medium and it was in direct sunlight for a while and then it was shadow fell on the watch so it's been in kind of um, indirect sunlight i don't know exactly what time that happened but let's say uh, within two hours it's went from low to medium so let's see if it gets to high today so i just want to take a brief moment to go over the actual casio manual for this watch it's the 5463 module which is the module for the gwg 1000 and see what it specifically says or advises around charging via the tough solar so it starts by saying the face of the watch is the solar panel that generates power from light i think that's quite obvious the generated power charges a built-in rechargeable battery which powers watch operations and the watch charges whenever it's exposed to light so i think that's pretty obvious and straightforward so far in the charging guide, it says, whenever you're not wearing the watch, leave it in a location where it is exposed to light. That's where I tripped up. I had actually um, left it in a box where it wasn't exposed to light for a number of uh, weeks, actually, and inevitably it had stopped um, charging and therefore it had lost its power. It also says best charging performance is achieved by exposing the watch to the strongest light available. So here you can see I've got it in direct sunlight. However, it does go on to say within the manual that there's a warning, leaving the watch in bright light can make it come 
become quite hot, and it explains the issues there. Um, and then it goes on to the, the power levels. So it has what it classes as one, two, three, four, five levels of power. One is high, where all functions enabled are enabled. Two is medium, where all functions are still enabled. Three is low time, which is auto and manual receive, illumination, beeper, and sensor operation disabled, second hand jumps every two seconds. You might have noticed that on my video. Level four is all hands stopped at 12 o'clock, all functions disabled. And level five is all hands stopped at 12 o'clock, all functions disabled, and settings return to their initial factory defaults. So that is what you kind of want to avoid, really, because that means you have to reprogram the watch from scratch, make sure it's on the right time zone, etc., etc. Now, what you may have noticed when I was just talking about what the manual says is that it talks about the watch getting too hot if it's in direct sunlight, and of course, I had it in direct sunlight, and it was quite a hot day. This Mediterranean-type sun beaming down, and actually the, the watch lit, got very, very warm. Um, what's interesting is that it gives you an important note in the, uh, in the manual where it says, allowing the watch to become very hot can cause its liquid crystal display to go blank, totally black or totally white, depending on the watch model. The, apparent, the appearance of the LCD should become normal again once the watch returns to normal temperature. Now, I was not at all aware of that. So when that first happened to this watch and I fetched out the sun, I honestly thought I'd just broken my beloved Desert Camouflage GWG-1000. Anyway, what had actually happened is that it had done what it highlighted in the manual may well happen if it gets too hot. You can see there, 53.1 degrees C. The watch had got incredibly hot. Um, but you saw how quickly it recovered itself. It actually recovered itself in about, in un, definitely under one minute, maybe even faster. That's incredible. So another example of why this watch is an absolute beast, an absolute tank, it can put up with over 50 degrees. It has this mechanism, whether or not it's designed like that or not, where it, the LCD display turns itself off. I don't know if it's protecting itself or it's just what happens when LCDs get that hot, but that's what happened, but it recovers absolutely fine afterwards. I think that's quite remarkable. But of course, for my uh, loyal viewers, I know that you're all keen to see exactly what it looked like when I first got it out of the sun because I didn't actually record that as it happened. So I'm a sucker for punishment. I took it back outside, put it in the direct sunlight again, and here you see exactly what it looks like when you first pick it up when it's overheated like that. The, you'll notice the backlight was still operating. It was coming on, which is interesting. You'll notice the compass is working. If I press the compass, you can see it still moving around. So the watch appears to have full functionality on paper, apart from the fact that the digital display is not working. Now watch closely. You'll see these small black lines start to emerge on the LCD cluster. And it's a little bit eerie. And you can imagine why the first time I saw this, the first time that wasn't filmed, I was panicking slightly because I thought, ah, I've broken my watch. Here you can see the readout, 59 degrees centigrade, incredibly hot. I mean, it was uh, impressive that the watch just continues to continue at that temperature anyway. I did not expect it would get that hot, to be totally honest with you, and it was genuinely hot to the touch. You know, you've got a metal back plate on these GWG 1000s, so you definitely wouldn't have wanted to put it on your wrist at that point. It would have um, been rather painful in Burmese. Uh, but what's interesting is I'm running through all of the different functions on the watch as the LCD cluster comes back into play, and everything's working perfectly. The time was completely correct. The compass was reading perfectly fine. All the functions were working. It was as if nothing had happened. And that is actually what the Casio manual suggests will happen in this circumstance. I think the underlying message here is it probably is not worth risking putting your GWG 1000 in hot direct sunlight. I probably won't do it again because I don't need to. Because I find out, 
as you saw at the start of this video, a couple of hours in a much, um, let's say, less intense sun, and it went from low to, to medium. I didn't have to put it out any longer. I didn't have to actually um, give the watch any more stress. But I chose to, and I chose to do it again, actually, for you fantastic viewers. So if you appreciate that, please like and subscribe. It's much appreciated. But yeah, the watch is clearly incredibly good at charging itself, and there's no need to overstress it. Um, always follow the guidelines and the advice in the, in the manuals to make sure you don't damage your watches or get them too hot. And yeah, I just thought this was an interesting little story that I knew some of you, particularly the GWG 1000 fans out there, would appreciate. So the key takeaway from this video is the GWG 1000 is an absolute badass machine. Um, I think it's fair to say that I haven't found a way to kill it yet. And, you know, putting it through this kind of intense heat twice is um, a testament to that. I just hope you appreciate it. I hope you're all doing really well, positive, optimistic, going forward, moving forward. And as always, please like and subscribe if you enjoy the videos, guys. I enjoy making them and it's nice to get that extra support. Take care. Wow, the G-Shock Mudmaster really is a special, special watch.